Okay. Now, how about the exact model that we studied before, the Chinese Cummings model that we studied before? Yes, sorry. Questions, very nice. Hi, Sabrina. Um, yes. Actually, I have a comment about yes. your last statement, yeah. which is to say that, like, uh, if I had to guess, I would say that most dynamics are non-Markovian. At least, in if you go for to a very, very low, very, very high time resolution. Yeah, of course. So, from this point of view, it's also important in the from the fact that, like. It is probably how nature behaves most of Absolutely. the time, so no, no, no. it's this important is, this is to very, study it I completely, 100% agree. I 100% agree. I mean, 100 quite, okay. I, I, I spent most of my life working with <laughs> so I have to agree on the fact that it's important. I don't want to do that. So I agree. The thing is that it's also true that in many experimental scenarios, really, I mean, if you think in terms of describing or modeling uh, experiments in certain physical contexts, it's also true that they don't see, they, they, they really, what they see is coarse grained uh, in time, so they don't resolve anything which is uh, really related to these this, uh, time scales. It's also not, it's, I agree with you, and it is also, however, important to stress that it is not always, no, Markovianity is not always a small time uh, phenomenon. So there are systems in which you really have correlations that can last forever. So they are non Markovian all the time. You can observe uh, phenomena of uh, you know, oscillations in the distinguishability or coherence trapping or information trapping. There are a number of situations in which actually the correlation time is extremely long. I mean, it's not just a short time. And, and there are cases in which you do not reach ever the Markovian limit, so to say. There is no Markovian limit, okay? Because the correlations are infinitely long. So it's, it's not just, it, most of the cases it is really a, a short time, uh, or, or not most of the cases, in many cases it is, it is, it is really a course training in terms of a short time um, effect, but not always. Now, uh, about the Janice Cumming model, uh, this is the behavior uh, of, uh, this was one of the examples that they considered uh, in, uh, in the follow-up paper of the BLP, uh, which however contains, I think, one mistake, but read it and figure it out. It's not a crucial mistake. But anyway, this is how it goes um, for, uh, for the uh, Janice Cumming models of resonance. This is as a function of these R parameters that we described before. Uh, and uh, yeah, and it starts, it is zero here, and it starts uh, growing. It's an Markovianity measure. It starts growing, uh, uh, increasing R. Okay, and this, this point here is that because he, Later on, uh, it turned out that you can actually find the analytically the optimal pair. But of course, at that time, they didn't know, so they, they were just sampling uh, all pairs of initial states, okay? They were, this is the sample, and there's a small gap here um, due to the fact that, I don't remember exactly, I think probably here the optimal pair is, uh, does anyone remember? I don't know if, the, if it is, uh, it's amplitude damping, so it's grounded and excited. Or it is ground and the superposition of ground and excited. No, it's ground and excited. Hmm? No, they always have to be orthogonal. So it's ground and excited. Otherwise, it would be plus and minus, for example. They're ground and excited. Yes. Anyway, this is this is what it, uh, how it goes. And okay, so of course, and, and this is a model where you have only one decay rate, so CPD visibility coincide with the Markovianity. And I will yes, question. I will say in a moment what is the connection. Actually, I'm not sure to, to, to understand why. Um, so I know that for R, R equal one half, and it was higher, we said it was non Markovian before. Yeah. before. But uh, the thing is that, like, I don't see why it's a brutal moment where we are non Markovian and Markovian, because even with R below one half, the environment is still here, and we don't have a, a, an exact peak for the lower end chain. Mm -hmm. So for yeah. me, even slightly before, we should have a little n positive here. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, in this case, one of the ways of understanding it is the following. So this is something I didn't say yet, uh, but there is a connection between uh, this uh, divisibility of the dynamical map and this information backflow. I didn't mention it yet, because here I'm defining memory effects and non-memory effect in a way that is different from what I said before, right? Before it was the dynamical map, now I'm not talking about the dynamical map anymore. However, I'm talking about, and, and however, the reason why, uh, so 
I will first give you the answer and then I will motivate it. But the answer is, in this model, uh, divisibility uh, and the uh, existence of information backflow, they coincide strictly. So therefore, because we know that the negativity of the decay rate is exactly happening from the analytical expression uh, at r equal one half, uh, this cannot, cannot be otherwise, okay? Because we know that they coincide. Now, this is only um, the case, uh, generally it is the case when you have only one decay rate that the different measures coincide. But the connection between the two is actually something that is related to this property, okay? You remember we talked about this contractivity? Uh, is, I say this is contracting for any completely positive and trace preserving map, okay? Now, however, the fact is that you remember the divisibility question when we were talking about dividing the channels in small pieces. And, and here we have a problem. Dividing, but it's not a problem, but you see, the thing is that the intermediate map here, at some point, in the CP divisible case, is not, is not completely, uh, in, in the non divisible case, it's not completely positive anymore. So actually, actually, I mean, so to say, it would not be contractive in a way, okay? So, so that's why you observe these oscillations, okay? You observe the oscillations because you lose complete positivity of the intermediate map. So in a way, uh, I mean, of course, remember, this is not really the map. So I'm always, uh, if I compare always uh, uh, the time t and the time zero, okay, it's always contractive. But in between, uh, there can be an increase in distinguishability, which is coincidence with the fact that this becomes in this model is coincident, exactly happens when this becomes uh, non-completely positive, okay? Because I, I start, I can violate this, this contractivity in a way, okay? It's, it's, I don't violate contractivity in general because the map, the family of map is always completely positive. What I lose is this. So I have this intermediate uh, thing where I, something can come back. Now, in general, the two things are not equivalent. So it's not an if and only if. For this model, you can prove one decay channel, you can prove that it's if and only if. Okay, so that the information backflow defined here is equivalent to the loss of uh, uh, divisibility. But in general, it is not. In general, it works only in one direction, meaning, I think I have a slide on this. Meaning that divisibility, so if, I ha if my map is divisible, the trace distance and also many other, and this is not uh, an exhaustive list, okay? Many other uh, quantum information quantifiers are monotonically decreasing, okay? So divisibility, meaning if I have here, like, yes, question. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it was a question about the, um, the quantity you defined to, to measure non-Markovianity. How, how can you be sure that you found the, the optimal pair of, of state? Uh, there are, uh, for certain simple models, like pure dephasing and, uh, and uh, amplitude damping, you can actually calculate, uh, the, you can solve the optimization problem. In general, you cannot. Uh, there are some um, theoretical results which have uh, helped in restricting uh, the class. For example, uh, the optimal pair always they have to be orthogonal states. I think they always have to be pure states. I think then there is, if you fix one, the other one is uh, in, in a neighborhood of the orthogonal thing. I don't know. I mean, there are, there are works um, that allow to restrict uh, somehow the search uh, for the optimal pair. Um, but in general, uh, for, for more than a qubit, uh, you, you need to sample. And now sampling randomly uh, the space of states on n-level systems is absolutely non-trivial because the space of so is a very, very complicated geometry and it's not trivial to do this in, a, uh, in an unbiased way. So generally it's a complicated thing to, to explore uh, numerically uh, the, the optimal pair. And obviously you can never, I mean it's, it's a sampling, so you, know, you can never be sure I, I went through all of them. But for symbol qubits you have uh, uh, you have uh, analytical results. For one qubit amplitude damping and pure dephasing and maybe some other models. Okay. Now, uh, following the trace distance, this again is not a comprehensive list, okay? But following the trace distance uh, measure, the BLP measure, 
a lot of people started to think, okay, why do we have to use trace distance to quantify or distinguishability to quantify information loss? I can use many, no, in quantum information theory, there are many, many ways of quantifying um, information, the amount of information on a quantum system. You can use mutual information, fission information, fidelity between states, entanglement with Rancilla. This is a very uh, famous uh, rivas well uh, paper. Uh, and then uh, you can use channel capacities, you can use many, you can use uh, uh, coherence, you can use a number of uh, quantifiers, you can use relative entropy. There is, some of them um, are, you know, have better properties than others, but they all have the same property. So, they, they all, so you must choose, so the, the thing is, choose the quantifier of information you want, given by you know, quantum information theory, but make sure it's contractive on the CPTP maps. This you need to have. You need to require contractivity on the CPTP maps because this is what links with the divisibility um, idea which is connected to the limb platform and so on. Again, it's not an if and only if, but it's true. So divisibility, what is true is this, the divisibility implies monotonicity of all these quantifiers. So if I negate this sentence, no monotonicity of all of these quantifiers implies non-divisibility. Okay. So if I have a non-monotonic behavior of, on any of these quantifiers, then I can claim that it is non-divisible. Non okay. But again, it's not an if and only if uh, conditions, except for very simple um, cases. And on top of that, they are in general all these, and there are many more. Now I, I don't want to, this was an old slide, and. I just mentioned some, but there are, you can use really as many as you want. Well, how do I choose which one I want to use? Why should I choose one quantifier with respect to another? Generally, um, okay, there is first of all a big distinction towards continuous variable and finite uh, dimensional system. Continuous variables are more complicated <laughs> in, in, from, this, uh, from, from this regard, okay? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, inc incidentally, the Limblad theorem, or Gorini, Kosakowski, Sudash, and Limblad theorem, strictly speaking, has only been demonstrated for finite dimensional Hilbert spaces. For the quantum harmonic oscillator, there is no Limblad theorem. Okay, it, people say it holds, but mathematically, so my colleague, uh, mathematical physicist, um, uh, say it's, it's, uh, it's, it's open. It is, strictly speaking, not demonstrated for continuous variable systems because it's technically complicated um, to, to actually to demonstrate it. But, but of course, it must be true. We all uh, use the master equation, the quantum harmonic oscillator, interacting with, the, with cavity losses, you know, but, but it, is, it is so. And also, if you have ever read, I don't know if some of you have read the original papers of uh, both Limblad, Orgolini, Kosakowski, and Sudash, they are like, it's heavy stuff, people, very heavy. <laughs> I mean, the Golinico Sagos I understand more, but the Limblad are uh, heavy, heavy things. Once, uh, in my group, there is also a group on operational quantum mechanics, a subgroup of my group does operational quantum mechanics, and uh, some time ago, uh, we uh, had, um, um, some time ago, means years ago, I asked some of these people to, to uh, give a seminar uh, on the Limblad paper. It was very interesting. And they said, okay, we will check uh, everything and then we will give that a paper. This, uh, this the guy, Yuka Kyu, was really excellent, amazing uh, physicist now in Nottingham. Uh, said, okay, I, I'm gonna give the seminars on Limblad form. And then he came to me uh, to schedule the seminar. And he said, okay, uh, we do it on uh, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 9 to 5 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how it went. We had no, it was like three days. <laughs> Heavy. Uh, I don't remember much, but. <laughs> okay, so you choose, you choose uh, depending on, uh, on, on the, for example, fidelity of states, and other, they, they are used, uh, it's, it's easier to, to use them for continuous variable systems, why mutual information is hard for continuous variable systems. And, and, uh, and channel capacity, I would say, possible. But nonetheless, it depends on the, on the system. But most of all, depends on what you are interested in, on the type of task you are interested in, okay? There are some papers uh, discussing uh, uh, memory effects in quantum metrology, okay? So uh, are memory effects useful or not useful uh, in, in, uh, in tasks related to quantum metrology? 
which quantifiers of information should I use? Well, I use fissure information, because fissure information is what it is used in quantum metrology as a field, so if I want to study non Markoviani memory effect in quantum metrology, I use uh, fissure information. Uh, some other people may be interested in understanding effects related to, uh, to, to um, quantum communication problems, uh, the, the resistance to noise and so on. Then you would use channel capacities, for example. So it depends on, on, uh, on what you are interested in, on, on, on the task you want to explore. There is also, and here I will just mention, there is also a way of uh, introducing some sort of hierarchy uh, of non-Markovianity, so something which, which we can be in between, um, let's say, uh, I, I talked about, uh, about divisibility and I called it CP divisibility, and, and uh, but if this is only positive, this would be P divisibility, but you know, when, when I define the complete positivity, I, I introduce the concept of K positivity, okay? Complete positivity is positivity for all Ks, I said at the time. So you can, you can have different degrees of non-Markoviani. This is something we, uh, we did with Darek some time ago, but we will not discuss this further. And uh, there are also ways of detecting non-Markoviani that are a bit easier compared to, um, to the standard tomographic reconstruction. Um, but you could ask, okay, but what is non-Markoviani in the end? Okay, also because must be the end because we have to finish. <laughs> okay, what is the, uh, what is the characteristic uh, trait? Uh, what is, how can I define it? Is there, one of the issues that we have most in the community is the lack, it seems that there is a lack of a description that somehow collects all these aspects, okay? A unifying description, a description which is really, uh, you know, overarching. Uh, and many results depend on how you define non-Markovianity and so on and so forth. Uh, now, this is my fifth take-home message related to what is non-Markovianity, which is the story of the... This is obviously my personal point of view, not shared by many people, but this is how I, I, how I see it, so I'm telling you it's my perspective. Uh, and this has to do with the story of the Indian wise man and the elephant. I don't know if you know this story, there's a picture of that. So the, the, there are pictures, uh, doesn't tell you much, but I will explain. So you have this uh, five, I think they are, uh, no, there are six in this picture, but never mind, the number is not important. Uh, Indian wise men which are uh, blind, you know, they have something covering their eyes, uh, so they cannot see. Uh, and there is an elephant, and they touch the elephant in different parts, you know, and they are asked to describe what is an elephant. But they only have access to a little part of the elephant. So their description is completely different. So for one is a, this guy touching the tail will describe the elephant as something very small and thin, and the other, oh, the elephant is something, and so on and so forth. And who is right and who is wrong here? I mean, this, this goes beyond what is right and what is wrong. The perspective, the message I want to give here is that the Markovian is a very complex phenomenon which arises from many different effects that change from system to system, okay? In different platforms, what we call information carriers may change. In some cases, it is very difficult to even identify or talk in terms of an information carrier. So there are some examples of QRD phasing where it's very hard to think, okay, where is the information carrier? What is carrying information back and forth? So I believe my perspective is that the truth is that you need some sort of full and sort of holistic view of the phenomenon, which is complex, but you choose then, depending on the perspective, depending on the specific platform, task, problem that you look at, you, you define your, your, your definition of memory effects consistently, okay? Uh, my uh, central, the reason why I gave you this central point, this divisibility, is that for me divisibility is still the main trait, the main common trait. Because divisibility implies uh, the, the monotonic behavior of all info different information quantifiers. So that's my perspective. It is really a mathematical property, it's not a physical property, it's a mathematical property of the math. But this is what in a way, in my perspective, connects uh, all, uh, all of this. Uh, but this, as I said, my, my point of view. And then the, the, the true view of non Markovianity has to be the whole uh, comprehensive uh, list of phenomena, all of them, provided that we are uh, 
consistent in what we, we define and where we start and what we try to describe, then this is, uh, um, is not going to create misunderstanding. I don't know, I'm not sure that there will ever be one quantifier of non Markovianity which will capture all aspects and solve this uh, eventually. I think I, I, I'm happy with this, uh, um, with this type of perspective. Uh, although it may cause confusion, so one needs to be very, very clear uh, when one defines uh, Markovian or non Markovian. Now, this is not a break, it's the end, uh, almost. Uh, and um, this is just because everything, everything changed, but I have to finish. And I would like to ask you for one more final, and he came back, the dog. Uh, I, uh, one more final uh, airplane time, okay? As a final thing before your final question. And this is about feedback, okay? So please do write, this will be a, a simple thing, do write um, feedback for me, because I, I, for me it's always a process of learning when I give lectures, so, uh, and I give a lot of lectures on open quantum systems, so just give some feedback, what you would have liked to see to, to be done differently. If you like the lecture, you can say, I like the lecture. So anything uh, goes, but I will uh, ask you uh, the, the feedback time now. You have a few minutes. While you write the feedback, uh, and then we do the three to one, I tell you what we could have seen, discussed about, but we did. <laughs> okay, the, 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 there was some slides on measures of, of experimental progress on the Markovianity. I want to, I will skip, look, look how much more I had. It was quite a lot. Uh, there was all the part on the, on the, uh, on the probing. And I will just end, actually, with uh, a summary. It's here. With a summary, meanwhile you write, I will, I will head with the summary of the take-home messages. Obviously, the take-home message number one and number two, <laughs> you should now remember because I repeat them like <laughs> one million times, okay? Uh, but but uh, let's go to, to the take-home message. Meanwhile, you write the feedback and then we do the final three to one. Uh, first take-home message is whenever we write master equations, especially in that form, Markovian master equations and so on and so forth, we are assuming uncorrelated initial conditions. Correlated initial conditions can be treated. I gave you the uh, reference of Kavan, but I promise to give, together with the lecture notes, also the link to the talk. He's a great speaker, I like Kavan's work. Second message, we have this incredible theorem, that is the gorini kostakovsky sudarshan limblad theorem, we have this Lindblad form. Please notice that the Lindblad form and the Lindblad theorem also holds with time-dependent but always positive coefficients. When we have this form, we are guaranteed that the solution of the master equation is physical at all times, meaning the dynamical map is completely positive and trace preserved. Third take-home message, Markovian master equations are always approximation. This is again what we were saying before. I mean, in fact, it is always an approximation of the exact system plus environment plus interaction closed dynamics, which is unitary. So we trace out the environment and in, in a certain approximation we get Markovian dynamics. The other one, again, is my perspective. I, I tend to like to associate non-Markovianity to non-divisibility, so Markovianity to divisibility, and then as a consequence, I have this monotonicity of all the information quantifier, you can imagine. But then again, if this is my perspective. So it is sort of a take-home message with the quotes. So you can, uh... um, the fifth was the wise man thing. There are different ways of uh, in a way, looking at non-Markovianity in terms of memory effects, these different ways are really different quantifiers of um, information flow and backflow. You can choose the one you want, provided that it's contractive. For Neumann entropy, is not contractive. You cannot use for Neumann entropy. This is a very simple example. We, we, we look uh, here. Uh, in the two-level atom case, the two-level atom, you start uh, with whatever. You can start from a mixed state, we can start from the excited state, it becomes mixed during the dynamics, but eventually the stationary state is zero, it's pure state, okay? So I can have either Markovian or non-Markovian, I will always go to a pure state. So for normal entropy, it cannot be used as a, for, for this quantifier of uh, information flow. 
Uh, these are the take-home messages that I will not, I have not, I didn't have time to discuss with you. The first one, I will tell you, just uh, so you know, ultra-cold gases as non-trivial controllable environment are very nice to discuss uh, Markovian to non-Markovian transitions, and memory effects can, these are actually saying, memory effects can be either useful or deleterious for quantum technologies, depending on the example of technologies that you, that you have. And now are we ready with the, um, with the airplanes, fantastic. Okay, this is the last airplane throwing and the dog is not here, but never mind. Okay, we are ready? Everyone ready? Yes? Three, two, one, go! Oh, thank you. Thanks for this. We have question now. Thank you. Maybe there is some time. That's cool. Maybe there is some time for questions. If you have questions, please do. Thanks. Final questions. That's so cool. Questions? No final questions? Maybe they are, they are more or less. Okay, there have been a lot here that you have asked. If you want to, if you don't have urgent final questions, um, well, we can, uh, you can always talk to me during the coffee break or the remaining of the conference. Okay? Thank you. Yes. <laughs>